I'm Laura Lepping, and today I am here with Rethos and Northern Bedrock at the historic Warden House Museum in Stillwater, Minnesota. Um, this is one of the first videos in a series that we are doing on wood window restoration. One of the reasons you may want to consider restoring your wood windows is for efficiency, sustainability, to maintain the character of your home, and also the repairability over time of your window. Pre-1940s windows are often made of materials that you will not be able to find anymore. So when we think about this sash, it is most likely made of old growth wood. Old growth wood tends to be more rot resistant, insect resistant, and will last a lot longer in your home than even if you had replaced it with a new wood sash. And so we wanna maintain these very good elements because they'll last you another 100 years if you maintain them properly and even restore them back to working condition. And with that, this video is going to be about paint removal and glazing removal in your window. So this is often where you will start your whole process. I also wanna introduce Austin and Allison who are gonna be helping me. They are core members of Northern Bedrock and so they've been learning how to do window restoration among other things this summer. And so there'll be an extra set of hands to make this go a little more efficiently. One thing I do want to mention is that you may have to check for lead paint when you're working on these windows. So lead is a hazardous material and often you can get lead poisoning through dust inhalation. These today do not have lead. However, if you do test your lead, you will want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area or masking up with a respirator and potentially even a Tyvek suit to cover the clothes that you do not want to get any lead dust on. My method is to do the paint removal first and then to move on to the glazing removal. And I'll probably have one of my assistants show how to do this efficiently with two people, which means having one person with a heat gun heating the paint while the other person comes in and scrapes the paint away. Personal protective equipment or PPE that I tend to use are usually a pair of gloves and a pair of glasses. And that's just because sometimes you can kick up little pieces of this glazing putty or have kind of dust flying around. The next part that we will be demonstrating is glazing removal. So usually what I like to do is kind of do a first run of removing it. And that's usually just kind of following along this edge, being very mindful of this straight edge right here. And so I always say you never want to kind of go inward. You really just want to use this edge to guide you along um, because this edge is what we're going to see. We want that to be nice and straight. One of the reasons you want to make sure you're vacuuming as you go is also have to do with potentially scratching your glass. We have the majority of the glazing out of this small pane. What we're trying to do now is slowly kind of remove this piece of glass. The issue we're running into is that there's still around the edges there's a tiny bit of space that holds the glazing putty and so what we need to do is just soften that and remove enough so that we can kind of uh, pop this little pane of glass out. The majority of where I'm pressing on is right along this edge, but gentle kind of wiggles to get it out. This edge is still very stuck, so I'm gonna have you use the heat gun just along, barely along this edge where there's a little glazing. Okay, let's see how this goes. Like I said, I'm just really gently running this along. Okay, so I got this side to pop up. And what I'm gonna gently do is just kind of pop it up and kind of pull it out. When you take this out piece by piece, what you want to do is take a little piece of blue tape and you are going to label your glass. I'll put a piece of tape with an arrow pointing upwards, upwards and an R. And that way you will know that this is the right pane of glass and that you need to have it situated with the arrow pointing upward. And so generally I always know that the blue tape 
is on the outside of the window where we're glazing. Similar with this one, we'll end up removing all the rest of the paint and glazing. And once we finish that, we'll check back in for the next part of the process. So now that we have this sash fully deglazed, all the paint off, we have our glass out and labeled with where they'll go back in. You can tune in for the next video where we'll prepare the sash for being glazed and put all back together again.